On behalf of the Dignity New York community, we welcome you. We come together to grieve, reflect, and honor Jimmy Lopez Acosta. We welcome Jimmy's family, friends, and former co-workers. In addition, we welcome those who are on Zoom participating remotely. <clears throat> My name is Louis Speaks Tanner. Reverend Dr. Jose Miguel Roman. And please note, although Jimmy's legal name was James, he was known to all who loved him as Jimmy. So we will use Jimmy throughout the service today. We begin, we begin this afternoon in the name of God who is all holy, the eternal word and the living, life-giving spirit. Empezamos hoy en el nombre de Dios, que es Padre y Madre, Hijo y Espíritu Santo. Amen. The peace and love of God manifested in the risen Christ be with you all. Gathered together in Christ, let us ask forgiveness with confidence, for God is full of gentleness and compassion. Jesus said the first who will be last, God have mercy. God have mercy. Jesus, you said the meek will inherit the earth. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Jesus, you said to those to said to love others as we love ourselves. God have mercy. God have mercy. May God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, in our grief we turn to you. Are you not the God of love who open your ears to all? Listen to our prayers for your servant, Jimmy Lopez Acosta, whom you have called out of this world. Lead him to your home of light and peace and count him among the saints in glory. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading, a reading from Psalms, Psalm 116. The death of your faithful is precious in your sight. Yahweh, I am your faithful one. I am faithful to you alone, the child of our fidelity. You have freed me from my chains, the word of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Dr. Diane Rooney, and I'm a friend of Jimmy's. And this is a reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea existed no longer. I also saw a new Jerusalem, the holy city, coming down out of heaven from God, beautiful as a bride and groom on their wedding day. And I heard a loud voice calling from the throne, Look, God's tabernacle is among humankind. God will live with them. They will be God's people, and God will be fully present with them. The Most High will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death, mourning, crying, and pain will be no more, for the old order has fallen. <clears throat> the one who sat on the throne said, Look, I make everything new, and added, Write this, for what I am saying is trustworthy and true. And that one continued, it is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To those who are thirsty, I will give drink freely from the spring of water of life. This is the rightful inheritance of the overcomers. I will be their God, and they will be my daughters and sons. This is the word of God. God be with you. A reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith in me as well. In God's house there are many dwelling places, otherwise, how could I have told you that I was going to prepare a place for you? I am indeed going to prepare a place for you, and then I will come back to take you with me, that where I am, there you may be as well. You know the way that I lead to, to where I am going. Thomas replied, but but we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus told him, 
I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to Abba God but through me. This is the good news of salvation. <laughs> friends, thank you all. Thank you all for being here with us today to honor the life and legacy of Jimmy Lopez Acosta. I have been a friend of Jimmy's for well over 30 years. We met while we were both activists and public servants in the middle of the HIV AIDS pandemic. I have the remarkable privilege of being asked by Jimmy's family to share a heartfelt eulogy in honor of our friend and brother. In fact, that story bears explanation. On Sunday, January 7th of this year, five days before Jimmy's transition, I received a phone call at precisely 6.30 p.m. from Michael Lopez, Jimmy's cousin. Michael has been one of Jimmy's angels in the past few weeks and months. He fought for Jimmy when Jimmy could not fight for himself. Michael has been God's hand in Jimmy's life. So Michael, I say this on behalf of all of us who dearly love Jimmy. Thank you and may God bless you and all you love. That Sunday evening, Michael and I spoke for precisely 36 minutes. During our conversation, Michael told me in very gentle terms that he was preparing for Jimmy's transition. He asked me a few questions about Jimmy's church community, Dignity, and I told him to call Ed Livingston, who, like Jimmy, is a member of Dignity and knew its pastoral team. Michael then asked me, Jose, Jose, Will you do the eulogy? I hesitated for a few seconds and then I said yes. But to be really honest with all of you, when I hung up the phone, I wondered if I had made a horrible, I mean an awful mistake. In my 61 years of life, I have been responsible for only one eulogy. For my mother. In fact, Jimmy was sitting in the funeral home when I shared that eulogy. I still remember one woman walking up to me at my mother's funeral and saying that I had put my mother's dirty laundry out in public. <laughs> Papi, le sacaste los trapitos al sol. <laughs> Although I'm an ordained interfaith minister, I wouldn't say I appreciate during funerals. In fact, I hate them. I hate them. I'm a man who cultivates joy, not grief or loss. Moreover, I particularly loathe eulogies. In theory, eulogies are public speeches commemorating somebody's life. However, in the Christian tradition, they've become hagiographies. They have become descriptions of someone's saintliness. And to be frank, I don't admire saints. I just don't. <laughs> but I deeply respect and powerfully admire human beings. I don't believe in saints, but I know that people with whole and complex lives live, breathe, love, hurt, struggle, and die. Jimmy was such a human being. A very proud Puerto Rican gay man, Jimmy's life was complicated at times painful, heartbreaking, and filled with struggles, some of which he hid from everyone.
Jimmy also lived a life of so much love, deep relationships, commitment, selfless service, faith, joy, and laughter. He called me, <clears throat> he called me Jose Jose, and I called him Jimmy Jimmy Jam Jam. <laughs> These were more than simply nicknames, they were permissions. Permissions we gave each other to become kids again. We did this when running around Manhattan window shopping, eating, drinking, and enjoying life. My God, how I'm going to miss such days. But all light casts shadow. Jimmy admitted to me and a few others that he was the survivor of child abuse at the hands of his profoundly complex and significantly damaged father. This deep hurt and the psychological mechanisms Jimmy developed to survive would mold deep parts of his consciousness and influence the rest of his life. At around the age of 19, Jimmy lost his mother to congenital, congenital heart failure the same condition that would end his life. Jimmy never really recovered from this loss. Every year, on the anniversary of his mother's passing, Jimmy would enter a profound and often debilitating depression. In fact, Jimmy struggled with clinical depression and various forms of anxiety all of his life. These are realities we must not hide if we are to honor his beautiful and sacred life with maturity and honesty. In the shadows of his life, we begin to see and truly appreciate the profound radiance of his soul. J just think about it. Think about it for a few minutes. These hurts, losses, and struggles molded a man capable of so much love, tenderness, and gentleness. A man capable of deep and transformative friendship, Jimmy was a man incapable of physical violence or hate. That is where, why here, in the shadows and secrets of his life, we see the heights of his remarkable humanity. His entire life was dedicated to public service. Jimmy was the quintessential wounded healer. His two most significant causes were fighting against HIV AIDS and struggling for justice for members of LGBTQI communities. During his lifetime, he was a part of, to name only a few of the places, the Hispanic AIDS Forum, the Latino Commission on AIDS, Jersey City Connections, Body Positive, GMHC, and the Pride Center of Staten Island. As chair of Latino Gay Men of New York, Jimmy mentored innumerable gay men, including me, teaching us that being gay and queer was not simply about sex. It was about being a living part of history, sharing in many beautiful and brilliant cultures, and having responsibility for furthering a politics focused on civil rights, respect, global peace and equity, and personal liberation. He was a dedicated public servant his entire life, deep in his soul. Jimmy was, paradoxically, a warrior, a warrior for peace, justice, and human dignity. Today, I serve as the chair of the board of directors of one of the oldest and most prominent African-American LGBTQI civil rights organizations, the Center for Black Equity. I'm doing this work because my life, my values were molded, deeply molded, by my friend and mentor, Jimmy Lopez. When we retire after this service to a small reception, I know we will hear more stories of sacred lives affected, molded, and even transformed 
by Jimmy's life, vision, and value. Jimmy was capable, Jimmy was able to help others see their lives and the world in rich and unexpected ways. As one of his lifelong friends, Aracelis Rodriguez, who is in her late 50s today and met Jimmy when she was 16 years old, once commented, as kids, as kids, Jimmy made me see there was a whole world beyond the neighborhood where we were born and raised. To this day, Aracelis thinks of Jimmy as her spiritual brother and genuine family. Jimmy's capacity to facilitate groups and create secure healing circles was brilliant. This man, who as a child would be denied safety, spent large parts of his life creating spaces where people felt seen, heard, respected, and above all, he spent his life making spaces where people felt safe. Jimmy had a remarkable skill. Really, it was a profound spiritual gift. He made it possible for people to come to him and be ultimately themselves. Everyone knew they could stand before him totally real, emotionally naked, and completely vulnerable without fear of being judged or silently condemned. You found a soul big enough in Jimmy to bathe you with compassion and unconditional acceptance. Jimmy saw you precisely as you are and made you feel respected. In these last few years, Jimmy found great joy in performing a host of ministries. For example, he supported Dignity, a national organization that is hosting this funeral mass, which proudly works for respect and justice for all people of all sexual orientations, genders, and gender identities in the Catholic Church and the world. He also led a prayer and meditation group serving senior citizens. He found such joy and meaning in these works of mercy and love. I think it is important to note that all this work harkened back to his youth. Jimmy began his entire life's work as a youth leader in the Roman Catholic Church. But to be honest with all of you, Jimmy's genius for deep and loving relationships is what I will remember the most. For example, he adored his sister, Lily Lopez, and her beloved children. He often spoke of his brilliant and beautiful sister and her exceptional children. Lily, you and your family were always a source of love and pride for Jimmy. He loved his friend Ricky Rivera. Ricky, when Jimmy saw you, he saw a person who never gave up. No matter what struggles you faced or what challenges life posed, you never ever gave up. You always survived with brilliant and powerful dignity. You were, in Jimmy's heart, the model of fearless living. Dominic, you were, for Jimmy, a source of love and true friendship. You were the artist who filled his life with beauty of community and acceptance. Thank you, sweet man, for being there for him as his life slowly entered eternity. Ed Livingston, you were the fighter in Jimmy's life. You fought especially Jimmy. <laughs> you always tried to get Jimmy, who cared for so many so well, to care for himself. You too were God's love in Jimmy's life. While Jimmy dated many men, <laughs> many, many, many men, <laughs> and loved a few, one man stood out above them. 
One love must be given the absolute place of honor. Carlos Soto, you were always the love of Jimmy's life. You were always his soulmate. For many years, your love was not defined by romance, but by profound compassion and unconditional love. Your beloved mother, Moncita, became his adopted mother. He loved Moncita more than I can put into words. Her home, your home, became his home. You and Moncita became his family. Safe space, secure foundation, and shelter. Ultimately, God gave Jimmy what he needed most through you and your family. Jimmy shared so many stories about you, Carlos. He adored you. And as he lay dying, it was your hands that brought him tenderness as you bathed him. And it was your loving gaze that reminded him that he was indeed fully seen, fully known, completely and unconditionally loved. And as his life ebbed away, it was you, Carlos, and your partner, Ed Livingston, who formed a loving embrace that allowed Jimmy to transition with peace and dignity. Carlos, you are, you and the circle of love surrounding you are a model of true family. As I end this reflection, I would like to share a deeply personal story. Over 20 years ago, I experienced the worst crisis of my life. I had premature cataracts in both my eyes. The surgeries to fix the cataracts turned into a disaster. I suffered more retinal detachments than I can count. I nearly went blind. Over eight months, I had nearly 20 emergency surgeries. During this crisis in my life, Jimmy was the person who took me to the hospital and often picked me up and took me home. He stayed in my house for weeks, ensuring I was all right. After one of these surgeries, which took seven hours and had to be performed with only local anesthesia, which meant I saw the doctor cut into my eye for seven hours. I was sent home. The doctor told me I would be suffering from trauma. Jose, Jose, I'm sorry. This was the only way to save your eyesight, the doctor told me. Then Jimmy, Jimmy took me home. Around 1 a.m. in the middle of the night, I cried out to Jimmy from my bedroom. He was staying in my living room. Are you awake? Are you awake? I screamed. Yeah, Jose, yeah, Jose. Are you okay? Jimmy immediately replied. No, I can't sleep. I keep shaking. I'm exhausted, but I keep shaking. I was nearly in tears. As a result, my eye was in enormous pain. Within less than a minute, within less than a minute, Jimmy one of the most dignified men I know, turned on the light in my room, and he entered my room in his underwear, dancing ballet. <laughs> I, Poppy, ever since I was a little boy, I wanted to be a ballerina, he said. <laughs> and he kept dancing around my room. I looked at him and I thought, oh my God, he's gone nuts. <laughs> I began to laugh uncontrollably. Within minutes, he continued to play the fool. He continued to play the fool simply, simply to make me laugh. He set his dignity aside to help me forget the horrors I was going through. Within a few minutes, I fell asleep. He left my room, and God, I believe, must have smiled. 
To this day, sweet friends, I remember that story as one of the most beautiful acts of friendship I have ever experienced. Jimmy was one of a kind. He was a whole and beautiful man. Like many of us, he had parts of himself that were broken into a thousand pieces. Like a few of us, many of those pieces became diamonds. And the whole of his life shone as brightly as any star. Today, today Jimmy deserves to rest in peace. Papito, Jimmy, Jimmy, Chandra, rest in peace. Rest in peace as all the angels of heaven foolishly dance before you like ballerinas simply to make you laugh. Amen.
the darkness of our world, and the pain and suffering of your people. We seek to be healed and be made whole. We seek to be reconciled and united. We seek peace in our hearts and in our world. We ask you to wake, awaken anew in our hearts the empowering grace of your abundant spirit, who infuses these gifts of bread and wine with transforming energies of life to nourish and sustain us in our time of need. That same bread Jesus took and broke to restore the unite unity of our broken world. Jesus, Jesus bless you, God, God of healing and hope. Let us all
faith with praise and thanksgiving. That is the Lamb of God. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, every one of us to share in this meal. No one should go away hungry from Jesus' table. Everyone who wishes to do so should feel free to join in the celebration of Eucharist. And please approach the sanctuary by row by row from the center aisle. This is Prayers for Nonviolence by Mary Lou Kaunaki, Order of St. Benedict. And this poem is how Jimmy sought to live his life. I bow to the sacred in all creation. May my spirit fill the world with beauty and wonder. May my mind seek truth with humility and openness. May my heart forgive without limit. May my love for friend, enemy, and outcast be without measure. May my needs be few and my living simple. May my actions bear witness to the suffering of others. May my hands never harm a living being. May my steps stay on the journey of justice. May my tongue speak for those who are poor without fear of the powerful. May my prayers rise with patient discontent until no child is hungry. May my life's work be a passion for peace and nonviolence. May my soul rejoice in the present moment. May my imagination overcome death and despair with new possibilities. And may I risk reputation, comfort, and security to bring this hope to the children.
loving God, may the death and resurrection of Jesus, which we celebrate in this Eucharist, bring Jimmy Lopez Acosta and all the faithful departed to the peace of your eternal home. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our brother. Amen. Amen. accept our prayers for Jimmy and for all those who have died in Christ and are buried with him in the hope of rising again. Since they were true to your name on earth, let them praise you forever in the joy of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Sweet family and friends, uh, right after uh, we conclude uh, this memorial mass, there will be a reception right through the doors uh, in honor of Jimmy. Uh, we really hope that you will all be able to, to attend the reception. If you're not going to attend the reception and you're saying goodbye, 
uh, please be aware that the folks are waiting right outside to come in and begin another um, um, ceremony. So uh, please be uh, cognizant of that. Just ask that of you. So we look forward to seeing you all next door. We, we, we even have some really good cheap ones. <laughs> Savior Jesus the Christ. Thanks be to God.